This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Whether this is your first time in our pews or you've been a member for years, we are delighted to have you worship with us this morning. At the end of your pew, you will find your red friendship pad. We ask that you write down your name and pass it to your neighbor so that we can greet each other by name during the service. If you are visiting, please include enough information that we can follow up on your time here with us today. Next Sunday is the first Sunday of Advent, and to celebrate, we will be having our Advent Festival in the Fellowship Hall directly following worship. Everyone is welcome to join us for, a fellow for fellowship, a simple meal, and Christmas crafts. There is a sign-up in the Welcome Center to help us gauge our need for refreshments. You may have noticed as you entered a tree full of angels in our Welcome Center. We will be providing toiletry bags for the many people that we serve in the food center each week. More information about this can be found at the insert inside your bulletin. Friends, God is here with us today. Let us sing and give thanks and worship God together. gratitude in our hearts. Let us stand in body or spirit and join together in our responsive call to worship as it is printed in your bulletin. Let us praise the Lord who answers our prayers. The year is crowned with bounty of God. All the earth is awed by God's signs. Even the morning and the evening shout for joy. God is the hope of all the ends of the earth and of the farthest seas. We will shout and sing together with joy. We will bless the Lord our God for all the good God has done. Let us worship God together. Please continue to stand and sing hymn number 35, Praise Ye the Lord Almighty.
we come before God not as despised sinners, but as beloved children. With the confidence of the children of God, let us humbly confess our sin. Ever-present God, we are quick to call upon you when difficulties arise. We are eager to ask things of you and too often forget to thank you for the abundance you have already provided. We turn to you in our failures, yet celebrate ourselves alone during success. Help us, O oh God, to remember you, not just in times of trouble, but in every part of our lives. Help us to turn to you during times of joy and remind us that nothing we do is the void of your presence and love. God searches for the lost and finds us. God invites the hungry to the table and feeds us. God sends Jesus and frees us from death's prison. God forgives all who sin and heals us with mercy and grace. Together, let us proclaim the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Amen. reconciled with Christ, let us turn to each other and offer a sign of peace. The peace of Christ be with you, and also with you. As we approach a time now for the word proclaimed in the hearing of Scripture, let us prepare our hearts and minds in prayer. Let us pray. God of every nation and creed, we call upon you this morning to rise us out of the slumber of familiar seasons. Help us to hear you this day, so that we may respond with courage and faith to your callings on our hearts. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Our first scripture reading comes from Psalm 65. Please join me in our responsive reading as it is printed in your bulletin. And together, let us listen for the word and wisdom of God. Praise is due to you, O God, in Zion, and to you shall vows be performed. O you who answer prayer, to you all flesh shall come. When deeds of iniquity overwhelm us, you forgive our transgressions. Happy are those whom you choose and bring near to live in your courts. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of your house, your holy temple. By awesome deeds you answer us with deliverance, O, o God of our salvation. 
You are the hope of all the ends of the earth and of the farthest seas. By your strength you established the mountains. You are girded with might. You silence the roaring of the seas, the roaring of the waves, the tumult of the peoples. Those who live at earth's farthest bounds are awed by your signs. You make the gateways of the morning and the evening shout for joy. You visit the earth and water it. You greatly enrich it. The river of God is full of water. You provide the people with grain, for so you have prepared it. You water its furrows abundantly, settling its ridges, softening it with showers, and blessing its growth. You crown the year with your bounty. Your wagon tracks overflow with richness. The pastures of the wilderness overflow. The hills gird themselves with joy. The meadows clothe themselves with flocks. The valleys deck themselves with grain. They shout and sing together for joy. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. to invite our young friends forward for a time for young disciples. I'll pop out this way. Good morning. Come on up. Join me here on the steps. Come on. Nice all hanging out on that side today. Okay. Very nice. All right, let's wait for our friends coming this way. Looks like Isla. Hello. Come on up. We have tons of room. Come on up. Yeah, 
Yes. Oh, oh, good morning. Good morning, Raphael. Well, hello there, young friends. It is so great to see you today. I don't know if you all did anything special this week. I know I did something special this week. I ate a bunch of food. I had turkey and some some sides, some stuffing and mashed potatoes. I had some dessert. I, I hung out with family and friends. Did you all do anything like that? Did you do so? You did. You did. That's very nice. What do, you, what do we call that? What you did this week? Does it have a name? Thanksgiving. Very good. We had Thanksgiving this week. And you played with your neighbors. That's very nice. Isla, that's very nice. Oh, you have a manger. That's very good. Well, in Thanksgiving, we do many things. We hang out with family and friends. We get together. We eat a bunch of food. And there's something else that we do. And I brought something in my bag here that helps me do this. Do you all see what's in my bag? Oh, it's an, en you see, it's an envelope. That's right. And there's something even in the envelope to increase the suspense. A note. Very good, Harrison. It's a letter. It's a letter of thanksgiving. Every, I don't know if you all know Miss Elizabeth, my wife. She's a Sunday school teacher that teaches the middle schoolers. And when she was your age, since she's been your age, every year at Thanksgiving, she writes a letter of all the things she was thankful for this year. And so I wrote a letter today to say thanks to God for all the things that I was thankful for this year. And I want to read four things for you that are on my letter. The first one that I'm thankful for is my family and friends, some of the people that I hung out with this week. The second thing that I'm thankful for is that we live in a beautiful place. I think where we live, with all the beautiful colors of the trees, and we live right by a river, I think we live in a very beautiful thanks, and I thank God for that. The third thing was unique for me this year. I bought a house. Miss Elizabeth and I, we bought a house, and I'm very thankful for that. And the last thing is I'm thankful for this church. I'm thankful for, for each and every one of you. I'm thankful for other folks in the congregation, the way that we love and support one another in our community, the way we grow together. And so these are some of the things that I was thinking about this week on Thanksgiving, and I wonder what you would add on your list. So maybe when I see you this next week, maybe you can think about some things that you're thankful for, the things that you would say to God that make you happy or excited, the things that you are grateful for, you would share those, okay? All right, well, let us pray. Repeat after me. God, we thank you for so many things. And we pray that you will help us be grateful today and into the future. Amen. Well, thank you, young friends. You can head, head back to Time for Music with Mr. Carpenter or back to the pews with your parents. Our second scripture reading comes from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 8, verses 7 through 18. Hear now the word of the Lord. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land with flowing streams, with springs and underground waters, welling up in valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey, a land where you may eat bread without scarcity, where you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron and from whose hills you may mine copper. You shall eat your fill and bless the Lord your God for the good land that he gave, has given you. Take care that you do not forget the Lord your God by failing to keep his commandments 
his ordinances and his statutes, which I am commanding you today. When you have eaten your fill and have built fine houses and live in them, and when your herds and your flocks have multiplied and your silver and gold is multiplied and all that you have is multiplied, then do not exalt yourself, forgetting the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, who led you through the great and terrible wilderness, an arid wasteland with poisonous snakes and scorpions. He made water flow for you from Flint Rock and fed you in the wilderness with manna that your ancestors did not know to humble you and to test you, and in the end, to do you good. Do not say to yourself, my power and the might of my own hand have gotten me this wealth, but remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the power to get wealth, so that he may confirm his covenant that he swore to your ancestors, as he is doing today. The grass withers, the, the flower fades, but the word of the Lord will stand forever. This is the word of the Lord. God. Will you pray with me for a moment? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing to you, o, o Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I'll be the first one to admit, this is a strange Sunday. In shopping centers across America, you can't walk three feet without seeing another holiday deal. Radio stations have been playing Christmas music for a couple weeks now, and even the most strict Thanksgiving fans can no longer deny others the right to play Christmas music. It's a mad dash to the end of the year. There's shopping to be done, gifts to be wrapped, parties to attend, miles that must be traveled, and homes that need to be decorated. There's a lot of pressure to get into a constant state of holiday cheer. But we aren't actually in Advent yet. That doesn't start till next Sunday. So if you're wondering why there's no Christmas carols or gospel readings in your uh, bulletin today, that is why. Because while the rest of the world is catapulting into the holidays, the church still has a week left. Our scripture reading today comes from a longer speech given by Moses to the Israelites. This is 40 years after they've left Egypt, where they had been enslaved for centuries. And after fleeing from Pharaoh, Moses led the people through the wilderness to Mount Sinai to receive the Ten Commandments and then on towards the Promised Land. But before they could reach it, the spies that had been sent to scout out their future home lied and attempted to rebel against Moses and against God. Because of this betrayal, God declares that no one from that generation that had escaped slavery in Egypt will be alive to enter the Promised Land. And that includes Moses. So this speech is Moses' last chance to tell the people what they need to remember. It's his last attempt to have his words be passed on down through the generations, and he doesn't hold back any details. He goes over their re recent history, the years in the desert, how they handled threats from other rulers in the region. He repeats the Ten Commandments, explains how worship is to occur, and describes the festivals that are to be celebrated. He also gives the Israelites the greatest commandment, to love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. This commandment forms the foundation for all the other rules and requirements that Moses lists. Because if the Israelites do not love God with all their hearts, then none of their other actions matter. There is no point in following any of the other laws or participating in the festivals if God isn't being remembered through their actions. God being forgotten about is what Moses is most concerned with in this passage. We see a similar lesson reflected in our own culture plenty of times, like in the Disney movie Hercules, where the titular character receives training and guidance from a satyr named Phil. Through Phil's help, Hercules becomes a hero, but he refuses to listen when it is most important, insisting that he doesn't need a mentor anymore. He's better off on his own. 
Once he's finally alone, Hercules quickly realizes that he was wrong, that he needs his friends and he needs guidance when things get difficult. But more than that, he realizes that his friends are the reason he became a hero in the first place. When Hercules makes amends with Phil, he's able to face down the bad guys and save the day. The movie ends with a crowd declaring that Hercules is Phil's boy, while the satyr is hugged by Hercules and the others. The Israelites are getting this preemptive warning from Moses. God has promised to deliver them to a land full of good food, clean water, and ample resources. There, they will build houses and have more wealth than their families have ever seen before. Their children will want from nothing. But God is the one fulfilling this promise. The Israelites receive everything, not because of their own abilities, but because of God's power. God sent the ten plagues to convince the Pharaoh to let the Israelites go. God was there for them in the wilderness, providing manna for them when there was no food. God was making water appear when there was none to be found. Without God, Moses wouldn't even be saying these words. Now, there's nothing wrong with the Israelites enjoying their prosperity. There's nothing wrong with enjoying things or celebrating good fortune. The problem arises when the Israelites begin to see themselves as the powerful ones, as opposed to God. The problem arises when the Israelites worship other gods, as opposed to the one true God. That's why Moses reminds them three times in this passage to not forget the Lord your God. His concern is not necessarily for the people he is talking to, but rather future generations the generations that will spend their lives in comfort and that have not experienced slavery or the wilderness. Moses is attempting to build a culture of remembrance where parents tell their children about the power and the goodness of God and teach them how to uphold God's commandments. If the Israelite society forgets their God, then they forget where they came from. And at that point, they've completely forgotten who they are. It's easy for us to think that we would never be like the Israelites. We would never be like Hercules. If you go to church regularly, you probably think to yourself, I would never forget God. And I do the same thing. I tell myself that I am in seminary, so I must spend more than enough time with God. I can't possibly forget that all God has done for me because all of my final papers are about Jesus. But every year, I'm distracted by everything around me. There's the final exams, the traveling, concerns about the weather, anxiety over gift giving, and the concern that someone will bring up politics at the dinner table. With all the chaos, we're left penciling in time for God. He gets four Sundays, sometimes Christmas Eve, and Christmas morning. Quick prayers given over Christmas dinner, and the topic of the conversation quickly shifts to new jobs and relationship statuses. We claim that Jesus is the reason for this season, but then we spend more time on Amazon than in prayer. We thank relatives for their gifts, but forget that God is the reason that we're even able to gather in the first place. We live in this consumer-driven society, a land that is so full of wheat and barley that every grocery store has entire aisles devoted to different types of bread. We no longer need to mine for our resources. We simply pull out our phones and click overnight shipping. God is scheduled in on Sundays, so we have more time to worry about grades and gift cards and whether or not that one ant is going to ask about the 2024 elections. And we forget to thank God for the chance to receive an education. We forget to thank God for our prosperity that allows for the gift giving. We forget to thank God for family and for friends, even if they bring up topics we'd rather they didn't. So as we wait and approach the official start to Advent, I challenge you to bring God with you as you leave this building. Bring God with you in your shopping, 
in your decorating and let God sit with you even in your frustrations. Search for ways to spend more time with God during the week. Start a devotional or a prayer journal or read a bit of scripture every day. Because every gift you receive this holiday season comes not just from a loved one, but from God. And through God, we are able to share our gifts with others. Amen. We give thanks for the gifts that come from our God and the opportunity to recognize the source of all goodness and love in our lives. So as a response to the word proclaim, let us stand in spirit or body and let us sing hymn number 37, Let All Things Now Living. Please remain standing and join me as we affirm our faith through these words from the Heidelberg, Heidelberg Catechism. As we seek to follow Christ in this world, let us state what we believe. My only comfort in life and death is that I am not my own, but belong body and soul in life and in death to my faithful Savior, Jesus Christ. He has paid for all my sins with his precious blood and has set me free from the tyranny of the devil. He also watches over me in such a way that not a hair can fall from my head without the will of my Father in heaven. In fact, all things must work together for my salvation. Because I belong to him, Christ, by his Holy Spirit, assures me of eternal life and makes him wholeheartedly willing and ready from now on to live for him. You may be seated.
like Moses and the Israelites gathered near the Jordan. We gather this morning with all of our hopes and dreams, our cares and our concerns, and we gather in prayer. So let us come before our God. Let us pray. Lord God of the Israelites, our God, we give thanks for your commandments and your prophets, for the ways you nudge us to do your will in kind and compassionate reminders, for your words that speak directly to our hearts in the revelation of a lyric or the aha moment written on a page, for the mystery that the grandest and most powerful being in the universe just wants us to turn the lights on in our soul and be reunited with your loving presence. For this love and warmth and care that we feel with family, both biological and chosen, around a Thanksgiving dinner. So we give abundant thanks to you, our greatest ordinance, and your will that is to love and to be loved. So how couldn't we worship your holy name? Lord God, Savior of the world, we bring our prayers before you this day. On a holiday weekend filled with images of happy families and full bellies, we are also grateful that you let us pause and let go of our desires for perfection. We bear to you our fears of squabbling about politics and religion at the table. We recognize the absence of those who are missed at these family gatherings. We recognize the ways our bodies or our friends are ailing in sickness especially those that we care for, like Kathy, Carol, and Cindy. We pray, O oh God, that tomorrow's morning back to work and normalcy might bring with it some sense of grace and an invitation towards renewal. Spirit of the living God, you are leading us straight into a season of waiting. May the Christmas trees out front and the leftovers in our fridge be a reminder that your child is coming. May we begin the gentle descent into the mystery of that miracle. And may we be like Moses, trusting in the power of our God who guides us on this journey together. We pray all this in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who taught us how to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. What a gift it is to have a God who does not let us journey alone. Indeed, we are called to give of who we are and what we have into this community of faith. So let us reflect on how God is inviting us to give this morning. Ushers, please come forward to collect our morning offering. <laughs> Thank you. 
Let us pray. Like Moses and the Israelites standing over the Jordan, we give you thanks, O God, for the gifts you provide us this day as we are st set ourselves stand over the thresholds of our lives. May you use these offerings to lead your people towards your goodness and love. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Please remain standing in spirit or body and join together in singing hymn number 81, Glorious Things of Thee Are Spoken. <laughs> Remember the Lord your God and bring him with you into this holiday season. And as you go, the, the grace of Christ attend you, the love of God surround you, and the Holy Spirit keep you now and forevermore. All of God's people say, Amen. <laughs> Thank you. 